breakfast, starting out strong with bagel, a blueberry one to be exact. Hey, what's up? If you're new here, my name's Maddie and I'm an online health and fitness coach. And today on Instagram, y'all requested a what I eat in a day. You guys probably already are aware of what what I eat in a day are. So I don't have to explain the concept to you. Starting out strong with breakfast, eating a bagel before I work out. Freaking love bagels. I hate how bad of a wrap they get because number one, this bagel right here with the cream cheese added it has like 15 grams of protein. So they have pretty good macros, probably more calorie dense if you are someone who is trying to lose weight. But if you're someone who's just maintaining or even trying to build muscle, bagels are a fantastic carb option. So don't be scared of them. Literally for some reason, whenever I post that I'm eating these online, I always get DMs asking like, oh, aren't bagels bad for you? Shouldn't you not be eating those? No, I eat one of these like every single day for breakfast. And granted, I am bulking right now, so it makes sense. But still, I eat some shape or form of them almost at all times of the year. So don't be scared of your bagels. Okay, I'm back from the gym. Gonna have a little like post-workout snack. Y'all, okay, these are from Trader Joe's. Okay, whatever, it won't focus on it. But these are like the barbell protein crisp bar, the holiday, holiday flavor. I have never tried these before until I went to Trader Joe's literally yesterday. But I've seen them all over TikTok. These literally, okay, I, <laughs> I have two protein bars I say this about. This and then the Fit Crunch Bars, um, mint chocolate chip edition. This has better macros, lower sugar. Actually, let me confirm that. <laughs> Not by a lot, but a little bit. Lower sugar content, so good, oh my gosh. But what makes it so good is the crunch part, in my opinion, because it has these little, oh, there's my cat. Hello, Miko. It's got these little crunchy things on the top of it. They're stealing my thunder. So freaking good. 20 grams of protein. But if you're like me and you like have a sweet tooth, don't freak out about all the nitty gritty details. Like everyone's gonna tell you, I swear to God, <laughs> this is about me, not you. Yeah, everybody's gonna have their own opinions on added sugars and gluten and dairy and all that kind of stuff. Eat what you can eat, eat what you like, because that's gonna make you fit in protein more. You know, for me personally, if I, I really struggle with protein. So if I don't eat protein sources <laughs> that have a little bit of sugar in them, I'm not gonna like it and I'm not gonna eat it. So I sacrifice and I eat things with a little bit higher added sugars and I get more protein in and I hit my goals. You can't be perfect all the time. You shouldn't be. <laughs> it makes your life miserable. And this tastes like a candy bar. So you're welcome. So second meal of the day is, I mean like show a little video clip of it, but it's basically just like Spanish style rice with curry chicken. Oh, y'all, this stuff is so good. Um, and something I tell my clients all the time, and I want to make sure you guys know, is that food doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be hard, right? This meal prep is instant rice, <laughs> or you can make your own and it's healthier, but I like the taste of the Spanish style rice, which takes way too long for me to make myself. But, and then it's just frozen chicken, thawed in the oven, and then marinated in that simmer sauce, which you do literally nothing. You just put it on the stove in the sauce and it tastes delicious, oh my gosh. But then if we had vegetables at the minute, I would have put the broccoli in the oven with the chicken at the exact same time basically let it burn and then mix it all together. And it tastes so good. And then you're getting your protein, fats, and carbs. And then if I had my veggies in here, which I didn't use them on time, so they were rotten. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but if I had those in there, I would have had my macronutrients in there too. So, but a little tip for getting your protein in. to so try to aim for meals to be 30 to 40 grams of protein. That's it. If you have three meals a day, 30 to 40 grams of protein, you're already almost gonna be hitting 100 grams. And so then if your snacks are like 10, 15, 20 grams, 
you're just hitting the sweet spot right there. Okay, so <laughs> clearly I failed and I did not finish filming all day yesterday. So I'm going to insert a clip of what I ate for dinner. Um, me and my friend went out for Mexican last night. Hmm. It was delicious. Had chips, queso, salsa, and then it had a burrito. A tip if you go out to eat. And if you're like me, especially with Mexican food, I always overeat Mexican food because of the chips and queso. But you can't go out to eat Mexican and not get chips and queso, if you know what I mean. So, life hack is when you order your food, if you are an overeater, just ask for a to-go box immediately. Like when you order your food, ask them to bring one to the table as soon as it is delivered and split your food in half, kind of like what I did. As humans, we kind of just like eat what is put in front of us and we don't even pay attention to portion sizes or our hunger cues. We just kind of eat until it is clear. And so what I tend to do when I am out at restaurants, if I know that it is a place where I will overeat, is I just take away half of my portion up front. That way I don't do that. And by the time I leave, I'm never overstuffed. On the times when I don't do that, I am always way too full. So a little tip for you. Currently what I'm doing in my health and fitness journey, I'm doing something called like a main gain, which is essentially where I reverse dieted to my maintenance. And then I have been eating in a one to 200 calorie surplus. So I'm in like a mini bulk. Um, and basically I'm just trying to rev up my metabolism since I have PCOS and it literally, <laughs> my PCOS messed with my metabolism so bad and I got insulin resistance. I was having all these types of issues. So this has been helping me out a lot. And in the beginning of January, I'm going to be going into a deficit to get myself back to the body composition where I had maintained for five years before I got PCOS. <sighs> long-term process. <laughs> PCOS literally changed my entire health and fitness journey in a nutshell. But now that I'm looking back at it, I'm almost grateful it happened. Not because I love PCOS or anything, but it taught me so much about my body and about hormones and how women are very underrepresented in fitness in general. Yeah, people talk about lifting weights and how women can do that nowadays, but they don't talk about hormones and metabolism and all the different changes that happen when it's not done in a healthy way. And so I'm here to go through this journey with you guys. I have been now for over a year now and I've learned so much <laughs> and now I'm helping women do the same, which I think is a huge blessing and it's made me a lot better of a coach. Yeah kind of grateful it happened now, honestly, because otherwise I would have had no idea. But yeah, this is kind of a daily example of what I eat in a day. Um, it wasn't the healthiest, I would say, because right now we have no vegetables in the house, so I literally got no micronutrients in today. But I'm not going to lie to you guys and put on a facade and be like, yeah, I eat broccoli and kale and vegetables every single day. Right now, my priority has really been protein heavy, um, but I do need more vegetables. So that is something I am definitely going to be working on because it's something I've noticed a lack of. But just know that if you are someone who is focusing on their food, it's never gonna be perfect. There's this huge like misconception out there that you have to be 100% balanced in every single aspect of your life if you are someone who is on a health and fitness journey. And I, <laughs> as a health and fitness coach, I can tell you that this is my life and it is never all the way balanced. Some parts are always gonna be prioritized over others and that's okay. That's why it's a lifelong journey and it's fun and it's interesting and it keeps things moving along. Thank you for watching. If you want another one of these, especially when I start my deficit, comment down below, like this video. It lets me know what styles of videos you guys actually want to see. I thought you guys were super into the learning videos until I saw my last video's stats and I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. that's what they're interested in. I'm thinking that you guys like more of the lifestyle content. So 
let me know in the comment section. I would love to see it. If you guys like my content, I would really appreciate the subscribe. I'm a smaller creator. I am actually science-based, so I would appreciate the support. I'm not an influencer, so <laughs> I'm not gonna be giving you guys BS and rumors and myths. I'm gonna be giving you actual facts, but also just more relatable content. As you can see, messy house, messy life. I'm a mess, it's great. But also, if you are looking for coaching, I do coach people one-on-one. -on -one. If you're a girl with PCOS, I got you. That is actually something I love dealing with. I would love to help you out on your journey. I have coaching applications down below, or if you just have questions and you wanna to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, my Instagram DMs are always open. That will also be in the link in the description. But thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye.